What's up, Cal Gang? Welcome back to Sim Dynamics. So let's solve this problem. So we're given a ball, mass 0.5 kilograms, and it comes in and it hits the ground at this angle, and then it comes back up at this angle, and it's going to speed. So our goal is to find the magnitude of the impulse that the ground exerts on the ball when it hits the ground and bounces back up. So to do that, we're gonna use this impulse equation. It's basically the change in momentum, right? You see that the mass velocity final, when it's mass velocity initial, this is momentum initial, momentum final. We're looking for the change in momentum on the ball, basically. So to do that, uh, we need to break it up into x and y forms, right? We need to join each of these vectors, and we need to do the impulse in the x direction and the impulse in the y direction. That's how we're gonna find the magnitude of the impulse. So let's go ahead and start in the x direction. So if we're adding this up, the mass can be factored out. We know it's gonna be 0.5 kilograms. And that's gonna be multiplied by velocity final, velocity initial, but it needs to be the, comp the components in the x direction. So velocity final is 10 meters a second. So let's go ahead and put the 10 there, but then we need just the x direction. So by now we know how to do this. This is gonna form a triangle vector. Uh, we can go ahead and take cosine of 30 to find the x direction. We need to subtract that from the velocity initial. That's going to be 25, not 20, 25, cosine, right? We need to cosine to break it down, cosine, and that angle is 45. So you plug this in, and you get 4.51 Newton seconds. So this is our x component. Now we need to find the y component. So this is going to be very similar. The moment of, or the impulse in the x direction is going to be the mass factored out. Now it's going to be 10, but instead of cosine, it's going to be sine of 30. And then minus 25, sine of 45. Right. But also, I tricked you. Right. Okay. So let's look at these. So in the x direction, both of these vectors are pointing to the right, so the x is both positive velocity. But here, this velocity too, it has a positive x component, but a negative y component. So instead of just subtracting 25, we need to subtract negative 25 sine of 45. So now these are basically going to be added together because the impulse is changing more than just a little bit. So you do this, you have y is equal to 11.3 newton seconds. Then, of course, to find the magnitude, we're just going to take the square root of 4.53 or 51 squared plus 11.3 squared. And then you get that the actual impulse is equal to 12.2 newton seconds. That's our final answer. And so this is just going through the equation, making sure we understand how it works, making sure how the negative signs work. And um, yeah, so if you want some more complicated problems, check out my channel. I'm going to do a lot more with impulse. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.